Hi, this is Terry Healy, bringing you some extraordinary transformation. Today's show, uh, welcome, you're tuned into WVLP at 103.1 FM, also live streaming at WVLP.org. Uh, today's show is brought to you by Ryan Everhart from Diamond Residential Mortgage. Um, all mortgage companies are not the same, all loan officers are not the same. Diamond uh, Residential is a wonderful organization and Ryan Everhart is outstanding. Um, his heart is truly in the right place. He cares about his clients, he cares about their families, and he cares about their pocketbooks. Uh, if you're interested in mortgage financing, you can locate him uh, at 350 Northland Drive in Valparaiso. His direct phone line is area code 219-707-8429. Ryan, always and every day, thank you so much for supporting Community Radio and for supporting my show. Today, um, I have a very, very interesting guest. This is kind of one of those uh, opportunities that come across in my lifetime where I kind of back into something and I see something uh, that I wasn't really looking for and find it extremely intriguing. Um, I had the opportunity to interview a gal that owns, uh, her name is April Vargo, and she owns a company called Play, Sing, Act. And I'm not, I, as I explained to her before we started the show today, I don't want to I don't want to muddy the waters or kind of misspeak <laughs> what it is she's up to. So, um, April, could you give us an idea of what it is that you're doing with your business? Sure. So, Placing Act is actually a virtual school for the performing arts. Mm-hmm. So, I offer private lessons, group classes, and I just started flex classes, actually, for um, anyone globally. It's all virtual. It's all live. We use Zoom. And um, I cover voice acting, piano, flute for private lessons. And then um, for group classes, I do a lot of general theater, general music, public speaking, entrepreneurship, and confidence building classes. Ooh, 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 ooh. Definitely, yeah. like, such a need for the confidence building. I kind of was like, hey, I, I know people that could use that class. Um, it's a so popular one. Lots of questions. So just to kind of to let you all know, if you're not familiar with what – April was talking about using her platform is called Zoom. And anybody who's familiar, like with Skype, if you go mm-hmm. back, you know, 10 or 15 years, and that was the, the medium that we use to communicate with people in a virtual way, Zoom is actually a better platform for that. So um, much better. Yeah. Yeah. I had actually started off using Skype at first because I was like, oh, yeah, this is the one that, like you said, everybody kind of knows and most people had usernames. Mm. And no. No, it was not, no, not so intuitive good. and not so great. So no. when I found Zoom, I was like, ah, it's fabulous. Well, and I don't think anything existed way back in the day. And I think I remember being grateful for Skype. But, um, but yeah, the reception's poor and you can't see really groups, I don't think, as you can like on Zoom. You can see all the participants in a group setting when you're doing using that as your platform. Yeah, you can see um, everybody. They can all interact and talk with each other too, which makes it so nice. So it's not just like the teacher always guiding, but everybody else can participate when they have an idea or want to share or things like that. So it's yeah, really nice. It is it's wonderful. Um so but anybody just to just to kind of put it out there a little bit further, I know we don't have to talk about virtual uh virtual education but that way, but is that uh Zoom is available to you if you've got a laptop, if you've got a phone, an iPad, anything with Wi-Fi accessibility, you're able to to use that. So, um, so I have to tell you, it, I have never thought about all the things that you offer uh, as being something that can be done virtually. How do you how do you give a piano lesson virtually? And that's the biggest question I get. It's, yeah, come on, you can't do music <laughs> and theater classes virtually. That's ridiculous. It's like actually, it works fabulously. I've taught both live, like in person. And then switching to virtual, I've actually found my students' comfort level is heightened because they are Mm. in an environment that they're comfortable with. They're in their own home or their own room or whatever. So already they don't feel like judged or they don't Mm. feel like, Mm. oh my gosh, I have to be perfect or the teacher's going to think I I didn't practice or I I stink at this or whatever. So the beautiful thing is they're already comfortable like from day one and they just feel like, I'm here to learn and I'm so excited to like continue to advance whatever skill it is that they're looking for. And then on my end, being able to teach like something like piano or voice, I have everything um, already downloaded for them. So let's say something is piano. I do work out of different books. And so I have all the virtual copies right there. So I can actually sit there and show them and point out exactly what it is I want. I can share my screen. I have a secondary camera so I can switch perspectives and I have a 
piano as well that I teach from. So then I can switch perspectives and show them, hey, if I need to model something, you can see it. And then things like my voice students, they get hard copies, like PDFs of all the music we work on. And then they also get WAV files. So when they're practicing their music, they're not going, oh God, what do we do during lessons? And I've got to remember all of this like music. And what if I'm singing the wrong key or, you know, out of pitch? I said that wrong. What if I'm singing the wrong pitches and out of key? Now they have the entire, everything right there. So they're practicing exactly as they need to be. And I give them first just melodies and then full accompaniments. So they're all gradually getting what they need. And then again, I can model everything live and then they can go off and they can also perform and do their thing. Wow. It's just, it's, it's still, it's like, a, it's probably by the end of the, the show today, I'll have my head wrapped around it, but it, for somebody who took piano lessons for a number of years, it's like hard to imagine. Um, so you, when you're teaching somebody like this, let's say a piano, you're not able to see their fingering then? You have to listen? You hear? hear I it? can see okay. their fingering. Okay. It, um, so they have their own camera, like you mentioned earlier, is you can do it from a phone, a laptop, any iPad, or any device, really, that connects to the internet. So when they're logged on to Zoom, I ask them to position it in such a way. So I do it both by <sighs> okay. ear and by sight. Okay. So sometimes, if I feel like I don't need to see... Um, Like sometimes our piano students, I like to look at their face because they like to do this. Sure. (laughs) They like to look down. Right. So I actually find, okay, I want to see this and I'm not really, you know, I've already seen the hands. Yeah. And everything that I'm listening for, I'm like, nope, you played the wrong note. We're going to go back. We're going to fix that. And I can always ask them to reposition as well. Yeah. So everything that they do, I can see everything I need. Nice. Nice. Well, that helps. Now it doesn't take the end of the show for me to get my head wrapped around. How do you do that? How do you do that? Um, So I'm going to guess that you studied piano and flute then when you, when you came up and were educated and things. So my entire, so I'm not an athletic person, first of all. So growing up, we tried sports and we did that whole like, yeah, we got this. But um, it was very clear as I got older that this just was not my thing. Yeah. And I had been doing music and theater my whole life. So I started in kindergarten with just piano lessons. And then I um, later went to flute in um, grade school and that actually ended up being my major in college and then I also sang all throughout middle high school college and then um, professionally as well so getting to go through the whole gamut so I really studied basically it ended up being flute and voice were my main study Uh and then acting and directing I also got involved in and I actually got to start directing when I was in high school continued through college and then my first job out of school was at a small Catholic school where I had to be everybody. So I was right. the general music teacher and the choir director and the musical director and the um, worship director. So everything. Wow. And so there is when I really got to also play with different things and hone my skills. And then ever since I've been like, well, we're going to stick with the theater and the music because that's really where my experience and my passion really lies. Right, so right. So I just kept de- like evolving those aspects of my career. Well, and that's that's where you're very gifted. You know, anybody who's tuned in can see it. You're so Thank vibrant. You. <laughs> Thank you. You look you're sparkling. <laughs> <laughs> and I was gonna say she's got a theater background. If in case anybody couldn't pick it up, but I yeah, that's why I don't think you would have had to say it for somebody to kind of catch it about you. Um, it's interesting to me though that you would be. Uh, it probably just speaks to how you're wired cognitively, but that you would be as comfortable directing as you would be on stage. Because I could certainly see you commanding a stage. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Um, audience has never bothered me. Like some people are very afraid of, yeah. of I kind of fed off it. I, I really enjoy being in front of people. And um, I, I loved performing and it was fabulous. But then all of a sudden when I found like, oh, I can kind of be in charge of all of this. And <laughs> Then I had these big concepts of, oh, I saw this whole show. Like I, when I'm about to go do a show, I can see a whole show evolve in, in my head, basically. Like wow. everything gets played out where I want everyone. And I was like, this, this is cool too. So then all of a sudden I started putting a lot of my energy towards that. And I found very quickly that that started taking a lot of my time. And I'm one of those performers that I really am a perfectionist, like when I perform. Yeah. So if I can't do it perfect, it's one of those things that it's like, ah, I'm putting all my effort here that I felt like I was 
not really able to give 100% to performance. So I really started going more towards direction and, and teaching. And um, I loved it. So I do still perform here and there, but nothing that's, um, yeah, nothing that, that went big and over well, the top. Then, then it does speak to the technical wire end. Because I can't see, I'm like, I could imagine seeing all the players and all the pieces in the show evolving in my head before it actually hit the hit it. So um, so how often now, like, and this is kind of not so much your business, but in your personal arena, how often do you get to, to exercise that muscle and go direct to, to production? Well, I have been do well, I've actually been directing for 10 years. Okay. And I, um, 11 years actually, sorry, 11. And I just closed my, the last show I'll be doing um, this past fall. My husband and I are actually expecting our first child in like two and a half weeks here. So she is, <laughs> she's coming soon, hopefully. <laughs> but um, I decided I'd be taking a break from directing because it does take a lot of time. It's all your nights and all your weekends, which is totally fine when you're doing it. But now expecting a new baby, trying to run a business and take care of a baby and then go and direct um, is just not going to be feasible yeah. right now. So directing is going to be the thing that is taking a back a seat. backseat right yeah. now. Wow, well, that so, makes sense. Yeah. So my last one was, yeah, closed in November. Oh, wow. Well, then I'm wondering too, and like you, you talk about your baby coming, I'm thinking, I wonder if she's going to be like inclined that way. Wouldn't that be handy? Oh, I really hope she is. Yeah. <laughs> like, because then you could do what you want to do and she could do what she wants to do. And uh, I know I keep telling things. Jason, I'm like, oh my God, Jason, if she's athletic, I don't know what I'm going to do with her because <laughs> right, I right, won't right, be right. able to relate to her at all. Like, so, I mean, it's a joke in our family, but I'm just like, mm. I really hope that she's like, loves the arts or dance or something. Yeah. But we are totally those parents that whatever she enjoys, yeah, I right. want her to be happy. So, right. and you'll be cheering her on. Yeah. So I'm yeah. not going to be a stage mom at all. I promise. <laughs> those are not those are not my no. favorite people to work with so yeah, I, I will definitely say, not yeah. become that yeah that's not your personality but I can see you like no. you know creating something that that helps her you know kind of live that out and then it helps other kids or whatever like kind of creating something that everybody gets to win yes you know, it's kind of a conversation that's so the goal. I kind of want to kind of want to spend a little bit of time because um maybe getting a little bit more of an idea of what your background was and what kind of led you to we're going to segue back to business by the way I got um, you. Kind of led. <laughs> <laughs> come with me. Come with me. Um, kind of led you into creating this this business that you have. Where'd that come from? Well, um, it actually came from kind of a negative situation that got turned positive. So um, I was in the classroom for eight years, and I had taught at two private schools and then one public school. And um, the schools I taught at, they're varied. They were every socioeconomic, you know, class of people that you can think of, and I mean every demographic and um, education in general for any teacher who's watching. I'm sure you're sitting here nodding, but education in general, um, no teacher goes into it thinking um, thinking what it's actually going to be. You go into it and you go, oh my god, I want to make a difference and I want to mm -hmm. inspire and. I, I, you know, I want to meld future generations. Like, that's the goal. That's why you go in there. And you find out that it's actually a very negative environment to be in. And it's very difficult because you have a lot of red tape. Uh, you have some very well-meaning people, but then you also have some not so well-meaning people. Um, a lot of the times parents that you deal with, there are fabulous parents out there that I'm like, oh my God, I love them. But... When you hear from a lot of parents, you usually hear from the complaints and you hear from people that are very upset. Um, sometimes it's that their child didn't get an A and they were very mad because they just feel like their kid should get an A. And then other times it was, you know, they didn't like another kid in class or whatever. So there was a lot of complaints that way. And after a while, it just starts to kind of beat you down. But this last school I was at is actually an inner city school. And we started to have a lot of issues with gangs and a lot of issues mm. with other, um, yeah, other, I guess, social kind of abnormalities. And at a certain point, we started going in to school and all of our meetings ended up being those of like how to protect yourself if your student decides to harm you or how to... Um, <laughs> How to deflect if someone's going to do something. Um, how to look at gang signs and colors and oh my. all of this stuff. So 
I found myself being like, I'm not a prison warden. Yeah. I have no experience with this type of um, lifestyle. And quite frankly, I really don't want to do this. Like I, and I respect, I love our police and I love our military, but I don't, I'm not qualified to do that. So I started to slowly realize I'm like, I'm not teaching anymore. I'm like hurting people basically. So, um, hurting not yeah. hurting no yeah no I got that I didn't thought about it like that <laughs> yeah so yeah. it was just all day you're just and then I I did really well with more troubled children so all of a sudden they, they were like great we'll just keep putting them in your music classes oh, yeah. and so before I knew it I had all these kids that were behavior issues right and I'm like I'm not even teaching anymore I'm just trying to get you guys not to like kill each other like this is ridiculous so, and I was also, that year I was 30, and for some reason 30 was like a really big year for me <laughs> to kind of like reflect and look back on what have I done with my life so far, and then where do I see myself going for the next, let's say, 30 years? Right. And I was like, I can't do this for another 30 years. And I found myself like waking up with chest pains, and I was just like, this is not, mm. I don't want to do this anymore. So... At first, I did a lot of, maybe I just need to totally change careers. Like, maybe this is it. But I had followed this idea of virtual education for a long time. And it's, it was something I was always playing with in my mind. But I was like, well, quitting a job and saying, I'm going to start my own business is really risky. And it's a big, it's a big undertaking. So I had actually, uh, my husband is incredibly supportive. And he's been there the whole time being like, all right, this is not who you are. And we got to make a change. I was like, oh, I know. I can't do this anymore. So I had been talking to him about, here's some different ideas. Here's what I really want to do. And he's like, do it. Like, this is the time. Because if you want to make a move, this is the time to do it. Yeah. So um, I put in my resignation. I finished up the school year. And I started growing this business. And um, it was funny because I had the, the entire teaching background. But I actually had never taught virtually before, ever. So it was a big learning curve. And I realized that. I'm like, you're starting a business that a big component of it, you didn't really have any experience with. But um, I did a lot of reaching out to people, a lot of learning, a lot of reading, a lot of, I have fabulous family and friends who would set up mock lessons with me. Hooray. Where I was like, hey, I need you to just try this with me and see if this works. So it was a lot of just like trial and error and playing. Because my big goal was, I started looking at things and I started saying, there's a whole untapped group of people out here that maybe don't have access mm -hmm. to lessons. Maybe their parents work, um, military kids who move constantly and, you know, mm. they don't have that, that home base. People that live out in rural areas and driving somewhere is like hours and hours. Um, homeschool people who don't have, like, you know, a regular school or community that they go to. And then even just some of the kids that are in your schools, but some of the things I mentioned earlier, they're in a class with kids that maybe they can't self-actualize. And I realized we're always so tuned in to working on kids that have problems or troubles, and that's what everybody wants. But what about the kids that always get overlooked? Yes. And the kids that are constantly sitting in the back yes. of the class doing what they're supposed to yes. be doing. Yes, the ones that fly under the radar. Yes. yes, and they're just constantly having to coast. Yes. And they don't get to self-actualize. And I realized nobody talks about these kids. And there's no market for these poor kids. Like, they're just right. kind of having to deal. Right. So those were the people, those all those groups, that I was like, I need, these are the kids I want. And I want kids that want to be with me. I don't, I don't want to be your, like, um, babysitter and I'm not interested in in being here because I have to be I want to be here because I want to be I don't want to get back to my passion which was teaching inspiring and then the arts so um, when I launched it that was my goal was I'm gonna get in front of all of these people that really have a passion for it that want to learn and maybe don't have the opportunity and hopefully we can connect and um, the first year was a challenge. Sure. Well, like anything else, right? Yeah. Any business. Yeah. Yeah. And especially the problem was a lot of what you had asked at the beginning, what's virtual education? How can you do this? So I learned very quickly that my first year was really an education year, like how to educate people on what it is and how it's actually beneficial and how it works. And I remember I did a lot of like, 
oh, I'll do free trial lessons to bring people in. That'll work. That doesn't really work. So anybody who's trying to do that, I would not anticipate. <laughs> you end up getting a lot of people that try, but they're not serious. They're yeah. like, oh, well, I don't want to pay for it, but I just want to keep doing this for free. It's like, oh, yeah, no, no yeah. friend. We don't, no, no. we're not doing that. No. So I started kind of doing the whole, you know what? I have a set person that I want to work with and I'm not going to beg. Like I will get these people. And I started getting the people that I wanted. I started getting the, um, the passionate people. I started getting really incredibly talented people. And, uh, my students are now all throughout the U S and globally as well. I have international students that I work with. My farthest ones have been in Australia and South Korea. And then I have some in Europe as well. And then, like I said, all 50 states. And um, they're just, they're, they're the most amazing people. And I always tell people that they actually have taught me just as much as I think I've taught them. And their families are incredible. And instead of those, like, nasty emails or phone calls you used to get, mm-hmm. I get these fabulous emails. Sometimes even like, hey, I was just thinking about you today. Or, oh, I have to tell you what happened in our family. And you almost find that we share family stories. Like, you're, some of these people I've never met, but some of the, like, met in person. But um, you become part of their lives, like an integral part of their lives. And they also with me, which was something that I did not anticipate. I thought, yes, I'm going to reach kids and teach them music and theater. And I started realizing, oh, my gosh, this is so much bigger than just that. Mm-hmm. And um, you really get invited, like I said, into their lives and – and some of the things are, some people are battling some serious things. Like I have some people, unfortunately, battling cancer. And, and you're with them the whole time because you're like, hey, how how treatment go today? What's going on? And then I have some other people who just have the most amazing things in their lives going on. And they send me, hey, here's a video of what happened today. You need to see this. And wow. so it's like, it's I mean, it's it's hands down the best job in the world. So, so you, um, wow, there's just so much in what you were just saying. Like, so really... I mean, you're providing that service, and that's a fantastic thing you're offering, but you're also impacting lives. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you take a step back and you really think so about I it. I see it. I'm that, like, hmm. That's the biggest thing that I was not expecting, to be quite honest. That was like my biggest kind of shock factor, is that it wasn't just about teaching, and then mm-hmm. I log off, and you're like, you're a distant memory. It was much more about becoming more than that. Well, and I think that and that speaks volumes to you because it's it has something to do with the way that you're presenting what you do and how you just are, how you roll is Thank creating you. that, you know? Um, so, and April and I had had the opportunity to meet outside of this conversation and uh, immediately drawn to each other. You know, it's yes. kind of like, you know, you can kind of sense like there's some good things going on with people. Um, but I, I, it's got to have something to do with all of that. And then also, without knowing, uh, without, without having a student to ask, to ask the question of is like, I, I wonder if it's like, if there's something that speaks to the way that you work your methodology. So I can tell you in all the music lessons I've ever had or training I've ever had, not extensive, but I have never wanted to share myself personally with anybody teaching me anything musically. I just have never had that desire. So um, that talks about you in probably so many different, so many different ways. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, no, and I'm like, huh, maybe that's what I was sensing when I opened up your website was like, oh, my goodness. Um, So a couple things come to mind, many things come to mind. One is that uh, I talked to a gal today that um, who has a family member that's connected to a program called Homebound, and um, I mentioned this because I'm looking and saying, I can already see you kind of expanding, uh, is that that organization works with kids in the public school systems. Um, that can't get to school. So maybe they're battling an illness mm-hmm. and they can't attend or uh, they have an ongoing issue, like maybe they have a severe anxiety and so they can't attend classrooms. Uh, what, it, what a cool thing it would, bring be, would be to bring it there. Um, also places, I, like, I'm like, a lot of places where the people are kind of captive audience that they can't get out and there's a places for your program to start expanding there. It's like, oh my goodness gracious, the places you could go, right? Well, that's the cool thing is that the opportunities are kind of endless. And um, I do, like when you said about teaching methodologies, mine are very different than most in the fact of I really like to promote my students. 
So I am not the kind of person that says, I do it this way. You need to imitate me and yeah. do it the way that I'm telling you to do it. I like to find their strengths and play off of those. Oh, there it is. So my big thing yeah, is <laughs> finding them and then, mm-hmm. okay, we're going to harness this. We're not yeah. going to harness, it doesn't matter what my strengths are. It matters what yours are. Right. So that's kind of the, the core of my teaching and that's everything I do, whether it be music, theater, confidence, entrepreneurship is you need to be the center and your strength needs to be moved up. So that's a big thing. Yeah. Um, that's why you're getting the response you're getting. It's part of it. Yeah. Without that, question. That yeah. helps is, is I don't do like the paradigms and lesson plans. Yeah. And um, I do have like lesson plans when I do teach, they are like planned out, but I don't have like, you need to fit within like right. this beautiful piece of paper is a lot of times it's all about who the student is and what they need. Cause each one of my students is at different levels and they all need something different from me and uh, they get what they need. So that's the beautiful thing is that it's able to be a program that is customizable to who they are and not necessarily just making them fit in a box. Right. Mm -hmm. So some of the programs, other programs out there, some of them are like, yes, you are what we're looking for. Others are like, well, no, because I need it to be this. Mm -hmm. And um, you can do that to a point, but some of it is, what makes it, like you said, so successful is that it really does play on what they're, what each individual needs and how to grow them. It's interesting because you know, part of the work that I do and the hats, many hats I wear, some people are uh, experience me as a coach. So I do a lot of one-on-one and group coaching, but I really like the one-on-one, probably for the same reasons. You know, like where you can, when you can connect with somebody and you are just immediately presence to like even their potential and their possibility. And you're just like, wow, you just like, that's what's in front of your face. And you, you work from that place. Mm -hmm. The world opens up. People become unrecognizable to themselves. Well, that's the nice thing is you can almost see something click with the person, the, like the individual. They're like, holy cow, I didn't know I could do that. And you're like there all along. It's just a matter of let's get this bad boy out there and not. Yeah not trying to imitate what you see on on TV or YouTube or even your educators or parents, you know, trying to really bring out the best in you. When it, tell me if you experience this because what I find in like in, in, in the coaching work I do is that when I'm working with somebody, it could be somebody that we're just dealing with on a, in a business platform. So we're talking about maybe, you know, accelerating them as a salesperson or a manager or that sort of thing. But what ends up happening is like every area of their life starts getting a little bit better and they don't know why. <laughs> And even though you're coaching here, it's like all this great stuff is happening around the peripheral. Do you find that as well? Yeah. Like, okay. Oh my gosh. This yeah. is amazing. Well, because I think also when you're happy, everything else starts to balance out. And when you mm. start to kind of almost notice your own strengths or your value, some mm-hmm. of the other things I started to notice is that mm-hmm. people don't want to deal with a lot of like garbage all of a sudden. They start to recognize some of the other like things in their life and they start fixing it or they start saying, "Mm, I don't know if I like you anymore. Like this is not good. So they start making other changes and start also pursuing other opportunities that I've noticed is they actually start saying, Hey, I never thought I could do this, but I want this. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you'll start to see them kind of branch out and it does, it it affects the whole person and not just this tiny little section. Yeah. Right. One little layout one little piece of their lives. That's interesting. So really kind of, you are doing a lot of, a lot of coaching and personal coaching. Yes. And that's when I take a step back, that's kind of hmm. where I'm like, I've almost kind of evolved into that. Yeah, you really have. And that side of it has always been very, well, not has always, it's something that has become apparent to me and has become very interesting to me is this idea of, oh, coaching people. And because it's a very, um, it's very rewarding and it is, a very interesting, it's very fun to see that. So that's always like something I've toyed with too is, oh, that could be like another subset. But, Without um, a doubt, that could be another subset. Yeah. And that's the yeah. cool thing about the business itself is when I started it, you know, I kind of had a very, I think, oh, this is what it's going to be. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, as it's grown, um, we're in year three now. And as it's grown, I've started realizing, oh my gosh, there's so many other facets of this that can continue to expand. And I feel like it's kind of taken on an entity of its own. Yeah, I would think. (laughs) Really kind of grown with me. And I've also had the opportunity to meet some amazing people. Like 
meeting you has been fabulous and getting to talk to you. And I met other people who have also kind of done the same things that you and I have, have talked about doing all over the world, which is like, holy cow, there's a lot of people out there that are starting to kind of try something new yep. and open up. And, um, and it's just really, really fun. Because when you first go out on your own, you kind of feel a little like, Scared. I'm out on my own. Yeah. And there's no textbook to tell me like what I need to do. And right. um, a lot of people, you know, we're going to do what? Oh my God. Like people are skeptical because right. you know, there's a lot of, the failure rate is pretty high. So um, it's really interesting to see, ah, look, all, all of a sudden there's this like little subset of people who are also coming together as a community of independents who are starting to expand and do their own thing. And I think you know it, aside from just the regular challenges that you've got when you when you hang a shingle and say, I'm going to go do this venture, is like you, I can't, I guess I can't imagine because I've done it, but stepping out and, and coming into something, being something something new, something innovative, some you know what I mean? And they're not, like if you if you said, um, Terry, I want to be a, a coach when I grow up, and you know, there you can ask Professor Google, there's 10 things that are going to pop up immediately saying, you know, learn our coursework and go through our rote and you'll be able to, you know, create a life, a lifestyle coaching where what you're doing with the virtual education, it's like, I don't know that, like, I, I'm sure that there are other places doing it. You said that there are other platforms for it, but it's not like it's out there and we all know about it. And there's tons of places that go, let me train you to do that. Cause there's all that train the trainer, you know, coach the coach kind of thing, but nothing to teach you. So here you are kind of going, what do I want it to look like? What, what are the goals I want it to accomplish? What are the, and I love, love, and I have to pause and say, if I don't, if I don't I drive this one home for everybody listening, that, you know, your comment of saying, uh, I'm not just going to take anybody just because I desperately need bodies. You know, I, you said, I want this. This is the client I want. This is the feeling I want to have attached to it. And then you just kind of dug your heels in and just <laughs> said, I'm not going to stand for anything less than that. I'm not going to tolerate anything less than that. That's amazing. And that was the thing that everyone called me crazy about. Because you're like, you're starting a business. You don't have the luxury to do that. I was oh, like, you know what? Oh, yeah, you did. I don't have the luxury to feel as like horrible as I did this last year. Oh, so, wow. no, I'm. this is what I'm doing. And it was really interesting because you start realizing like, you know, that what is that field of dreams? If you build it, they will come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I started realizing, you know what? I'm there's something I'm doing wrong because I'm getting the wrong clients. So mm -hmm. I need to like being picky is what I need. Yep. And it it really works because all of a sudden, once you start getting the quality people that you want, they start telling other people about you as well. And then you start realizing, ah, I'm getting good people because they don't want to be associated with lesser quality right. they want right. a certain standard as well so they're going to kind of oh okay yeah that's what i want as well so sometimes is if you say i take them all well it, that can sometimes come off as um cheap or desperate desperate to other people yeah, yeah. and and it can be a turnoff is or, that people run or even if they stay, even if they stay around, it's like almost like you've lowered your value. Mm. You've put yourself yes. in a clearance rack. Yes, and that yeah. was the other thing I yeah. noticed because I was like, "Yeah, no, this is this is not it." Because like one kid one time was eating chips, like in the middle of a lesson, and the mom is standing there giving him like a three course meal, <gasps> and I'm like, "I didn't think I needed to teach you <laughs> that." Like in the middle of a thing, mom, you shouldn't be feeding the kid like right. tortilla chips with salsa <laughs> and then a pasta course and then dessert came all within a half an hour I was like goodness oh gracious like this is ridiculous so and that's when I realized yeah no yeah so um it was kind of putting that down and then all of a sudden yeah the right people start coming is when you just start identifying some of those things that's like no I don't want to work with because then you kind of become a babysitter and there's nothing wrong with being a babysitter right. but 30 something years old I didn't really want to do that with all the education and experience and time I had invested I was like no I'm not well, interested or, in or you would have stayed in the school system exactly if you just wanted to do that and you were content with that and exactly. I think that like uh, standing that ground like digging your heels in it and just standing there impact like it it had to have impacted the way that you facilitate what you do like just not being on the clearance rack just saying I have enough value that I'm gonna uh, even if I only have one client this week that 
how you are with that one client because you made that commitment is a whole different girl. I mean, I'm just, it's got to have a whole different feeling to it. It does. And, and it does also, I think, help you to radiate more like positivity and good energy. So yeah. it, it makes you just like feel good about the work you're doing. And then right. it does start to attract other people. Right. And, um, and I learned a lot too, because I remember when I first started, like the big thing everybody said was have an elevator pitch. <laughs> and Ugh. my problem is, I'm a very wordy person, so yeah. an elevator pitch was like, I don't know what that is. I can't say anything in, like, <laughs> two sentences. So uh, I found myself, like, being like, this is what I do. And I would tell people, like, all this stuff. Well, the scary thing is sometimes people are like, ooh, I didn't mm. even know if that's what I want. So I actually did end up doing the whole elevator pitch thing where I was like, you know what? I bet I could say this in one sentence. So all I do now is I tell people I run a virtual school for the performing arts, and I just stop. Yeah. And people are like, well, what is that? I'm like, yeah. ah, look at this. This does work. Yeah. I'm seeing it now. So that also made me realize that sometimes like trying to be like, hey, let me tell you everything. People are a little like. It's overwhelming. It is. Yeah, it's overwhelming. And then you become that crazy sales lady that everybody right. runs away from because they're like, oh, God, not her again. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> that person that they just see coming, they're like, oh, right. God. So I just realized doing that too is just, you know what, I'm going to do a tagline. And then if you're interested, yeah. you'll ask more questions. Right. If you're not, right. they'll just go, oh, well, that's cool. What a great thing you do. And then that's awesome because now you can also weed out who's interested and who's not. Right. So that was also kind of a nice little thing I learned as well. Is that. Well, that was smart. And, it, and when you said that, it was like, I don't hear that as an elevator pitch. I just hear that it's almost like a job description is what you just said, you know, how you language that. And I thought, interesting because... Sometimes when that elevator pitch thing, I usually think the people that give you that and you're like, no, 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 no. It gets real sing song and like, oh my God. And that's actually probably what I did at the beginning was oh, we let me tell that. you like everything yeah. I do and I'll list out my entire like resume yeah, and you're kind of like, oh, well, that's nice. <laughs> if I wanted to know that, I could have just Googled you, know, you. Googled you. Yeah. I didn't need to talk to you. Aww. So <laughs> that was something that, yeah, being concise. Like I said, that was the scariest thing for me because I'm like, I'm not concise. Like, that's probably no, what but, they get. Well, but if then if, if they want more information, then all of that about you can come can come out. Right? You can share all that good stuff. And exactly. the cool thing it, when you when you present yourself that way is like somebody gets the opportunity to ask the questions from where their level of knowledge or consciousness is. So they aren't just inundated with all the information you think everybody wants to know or needs to know about what you do. Then right. they can start to probe from where they where they're standing. Where they're coming at it, so you're at year three, mm -hmm. profitable, yes, happy, yes. Where do you go? Where are you going to go from here? Um, well, the goal is to continue to grow, and the goal is to, um, you know, I am I, I'll be taking June and July off, which is the first time I've taken any like substantial amount of time off. So part of me is like, oh gosh, like. I hope that everything that I just built doesn't just leave. But so far, all of my students are like, no, we're coming back. And uh, my goal is to start back up in August. So have our baby and be able to spend a lot of quality time with her. And then um, be able to wear multiple hats. So I, you know, um, the beautiful thing is I run the, the business out of my home. So yes. I can still be at home with our child and still be able to raise our child, which was always a goal for me, is that I really wanted to be hands-on mom and not um, not have to enroll her in other programs or have right. someone else take care of her. And then I want to also be able to run my business. And I see um, adding more students. I see adding more programs. I see doing a little bit more public speaking. I've started doing that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, after you and I talked last week, I had it's so funny because I've always wanted – not always, but lately I've been wanting to write a book and I put that off for a couple of years because I was like, every time I sit down, I'm like, oh, this sounds stupid. This is not good. And actually when I got off with you, I'm like, oh, I have some ideas. So I've just been writing all of a sudden. I love it. I love it. I love it. So that's something that I'm, I, and we'll see. I mean, I might look at it later and go, ooh, but um, right now that's something to keep going and, um, and yeah, kind of developing in that aspect. So I see it continuing, continuing to grow. I see a lot of growth, and then in, um, April and I had had a conversation about it uh, before the show. But that you know, I can see so many different directions you you could go, you know, and different different ways that this this vision that you have and what you've created could like start expanding. And 
um, for me, I'm always looking for, always thinking like, where can it go? Where does it need to go? Where is there mm -hmm. a need? You know, like more of like a social consciousness kind of a thing. So um, I see things from that vantage point, but I see other things as well. Um, so many questions. So I want to go back to um, how long have you been doing then the virtual instruction for confidence building? Uh, a little over a year. Okay. That one started um, actually because of some of my students. And it actually got sparked from one of my students who was actually being ostracized for being too confident. Oh, sure, and sure. Yeah. I was like, stop it. Like, yeah. this is something, yeah. you know, she'd be made fun of because she'd be talking to people and let's say somebody of the opposite sex and they would be like, well, you're flirting with him. And she's like, I just, I'm confident talking to boys. Right. It doesn't mean right. I'm flirting with him. Or that, you know, she could go up and give a presentation and she could perform. And it was like, it was almost like her being kind of held down for or mocked or made fun of for feeling good about herself and I was like well this sucks like so I decided that obviously people needed a little boost in confidence because if it's okay to bring someone down based on the fact that they feel good about themselves obviously maybe we need people to start feeling better about themselves that they don't have to like bring others down and some of my other students that I had had like stage fright so, oh, I don't know how to do this, or I don't know how to get up in front of people. So I was like, you know what? This is what we need. So to kind of meld the two is that people who maybe need a little bit of encouragement and finding kind of, how do I talk to people? How do I talk to peers? How do I talk to adults? How do I, how do I dress appropriately? Like for whatever it is I'm going out for. Right. How am I taken seriously? What are some awesome attributes about me that I can start to see and put out to other people and goal setting that is how we end the class so about how to set goals and how to actually set them so you don't just say like i want to lose 20 pounds next week it's like well that's cute but that's not going to happen <laughs> um not that you can't but you well, know healthily <laughs> exactly so um i've created like an entire step by step how do you actually set a goal mm -hmm. and then what are the steps that you have to do in order to be successful so we mm -hmm. have to break these things down and you have to hold yourself accountable and you have to track your progress. And then I have a section at the end where it's actually like, when was my goal accomplished? And then a self-reflection, mm. what things went well during this whole process and what things maybe should I change for next time? And I personally do a lot of those things for both my personal and my business side. Cause I'm always mm. like, what's going well, what's not. And then I got to revamp it. So, um, that's a skill I use all the time is that I don't want to ever just be like, that's good enough. <laughs> like I always want to make sure that it's at its peak. So that's something that I really focus a lot on the students with. And then also just bringing up, how do you talk positively about yourself and to yourself and how do you bring your best assets out and how do you meet people? Mm. Cause that's the biggest problem that a lot of people have now is everything's behind a screen. Mm -hmm. So it's so easy to like talk to people when you're like behind your phone or behind your computer. But the minute that you go out and someone's like, hi, how are you? And you're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they're looking around and they don't know how to talk to someone anymore. It's like, this is a skill you're going to need later on in life and even now. So um, that one is becoming increasingly popular. A lot of people end up taking that. But do you do a lot of that one-on-one -on -one or do you do that more in the group setting? Well, it depends because... Um, I started off with group and then I would actually have people that contacted me yeah. and said, Hey, I'd like this to be an individual class. And then can you cont continue coaching me as a private lesson? So, uh, I actually have several students who mm -hmm. I started off as using the curriculum I built and it was kind of like, we'll do the four week curriculum. So that's kind of our, like bringing it up and kind of the speed, you know, introduction into it. And then the parents have asked me to stay on. And to teach their kids. So then basically it's like, it becomes a lot of talking about, so what happened this week? What's going on? How did you, um, how did your week go? And then what are some goals that we want to set? So um, we're constantly working on whatever it is that the student themselves wants to work towards. So maybe if it's being comfortable out in public, maybe if it's um, being comfortable with their, themselves, their body. That's a big thing, especially for That's women. That's huge. It's a huge problem. Um, yeah. Just feeling confident in your right. in your skin, and you know, knowing that you got it, lady. Like, 
do your thing. <laughs> so, um, and yeah, so a lot of people have been have been doing it. And then I do get some people too that that do have the I'm confident, but I'm afraid because I do get kind of bullied about it. So it's like, okay, well, that's their problem, not yours. So let's like figure out how to still like let you shine and mm-hmm. ignore these people. Right. So that's a big thing too. So it's a lot of kind of individual, mm-hmm. it becomes kind of an individual coaching thing. Well, and I think that, that I was going to say it's only that would only be two kids, but I can see that's happened like for me personally as an adult when I'm confident and I'm owning that, I've had some, I've had some pushback from women. Oh yeah. I'm like really? <laughs> I'm not here to steal this, steal the, you know, the light from anybody else. And you know, yeah. Mm-mm. Oh yeah. yeah. I've had a lot of problems with that growing up myself. And even as an adult <laughs> is that, crazy? that, Oh, it's, it's, and I think that's why I identified with that student so bad because I saw it and I was like, oh my God, that was me. Like, yeah. I mean, I was the one being made fun of, not the one bullying somebody. Right. But I realized that it was like, just because you can talk to somebody, it doesn't mean I want your boyfriend. And it right. does not mean that I'm trying to like right. steal your thunder. This is just like who I am. And right. I'm kind of, you know, I want to talk. I want to be out in public. I'm sorry. I don't know how to sit quietly. Like that's just not right. who I am. Or apologize for who you are. Exactly. Or apologize because you're be, to somebody else's uncomfort. Well, and that's the big thing that, that yeah. I talk to a lot of people about yeah. is, you know, that's, yeah. they're the ones who are discomfort, discomfort, uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So at a certain point, yeah, you can't start making yourself feel right. bad. Right, 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 right. Or like, yeah, diminishing your light or apologizing for, for all that kind of stuff. Um, exactly. Do you think, I mean, gosh, look at all the things you're already doing. And I'm like, and we've got baby on the way and <laughs> other things happening in your life. It's like the thought of expanding um i keep going back to to kind of seeing where you're gonna where you might go you know what you might end up doing and you know with it have a little bit of a little bit of tentacling into the into some social service kind of thing and this places where there's some hardship is it gonna who knows you know who knows where it's gonna where that is gonna end up evolving um also too when you're when when you and jason become parents it's like your vantage and your scope's gonna change too well, and that's why yeah. right now I'm kind of like leaving that open about exactly where it's going to go because I yeah. know that that's going to be a big change. And, sure. And there might be something else that sparks me and says, actually, exactly. this is where we're going to go with yes, it. exactly. So right now, um, I definitely want to continue to do what I'm doing. And then the expansion is going to kind of depend on what happens with this little one and kind yeah. of where life takes us as far as yeah. that goes. Because a lot of the things that have happened, I would have never planned on. And they've been amazing. So I don't want to, I definitely don't want to say, well, it's going to be this. And yeah. then it ends up another opportunity presents itself and you don't want to be like, no, it didn't fit within this. So. Well, no, thankfully you're flexible. But I, you know, it's like you guys will change as people. I mean, that's just what we do when, yeah. you know, when babies come on the scene. Yeah. Like, yeah. We become different people all the way around. I, um, so are you still looking to expand your students? You know, you're still looking for additional students? Yeah, so okay. um, additional students, I will be taking them on. I can I can take them on in August. Okay. So um, this is actually my last week of teaching. Thursday, I said, um, I'm cutting it off just in case she comes early yeah. and that I'm not trying to, um, hey, guys, I need to reschedule or I need to do this. So I will not be taking anyone on new until August. So anyone who wants to uh, wants to contact you, what's the best way to reach you to talk about getting your services? You can either go directly to my website, which is www.placingact.com, or you can email me direct at placingact at gmail.com. Fabulous. Fabulous. Yeah. I, I would tell you that um, if you're interested in her services, and I don't think you've you can be an adult or a young person because no matter right. who you know what your age group is, um, is you might want to get in there and get that going now because especially if you're going to take a couple months off, you'll have students that are going to want to get back on the calendar and all that kind of good stuff. So if you're interested, get your space reserved is my is my thought. So um, usually when we do a nice radio show, this ends up having a little bit of traction on its own and uh, brings a little bit of a little bit of prosperity your way, a little bit more of what you're looking for. So absolutely. Um, so I want to thank everybody who's been tuning in. I've had the privilege, and time goes so quickly. <laughs> I know. I'm like, oh, an hour already. Yeah, we're pretty much there. Um, been uh, talking to April Vargo. She's the owner of Play, Sing, Act. And uh, you've been listening to WVLP at 103.1 FM.
also live streaming at WVLP.org. Today's show brought to you by Ryan Eberhardt from Diamond Residential Mortgage. Um, don't assume that everyone is the same in the mortgage industry. They are not. Uh, Ryan is exceptional, and I've worked with him for a number of years. Uh, never had an unhappy client with him, uh, which speaks volumes. And I do know that um, he does the right thing. He comes from his heart. So uh, if you want to reach him for any mortgage financing, um, well, purchasing or refinancing. Refinancing is back around. Uh, his office is on uh, Route 30 at 350 Northland Drive in Bethel. His direct phone line is area code 219-707-8429. Um, thank you, Ryan, uh, for supporting the show. And uh, thank you, everyone who's been tuning in. I hope everybody has a great week. And April, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This has been a pleasure. I'm very excited. Good luck with the baby. Oh, thank you. <laughs>